as you saw, as you may have saw, our, our topic today is special delivery. We're going to be looking in the books of Luke and the books of Matthew, the first chapter of each. And the topic is Christmas. And the idea of delivering something on Christmas is common to us here in the United States. As a matter of fact, UPS puts on an extra 10,000 workers just to make sure they get the work done. And uh, most of you, many, many of you probably have had jobs delivering things. I know I started out delivering newspapers. And then I started delivering chicken. And then at one point I was uh, delivering pizza, Mark, like you, delivering people in taxis and then delivering people as a chauffeur. And now I'm still delivering a sermon. So delivery is, is something we're all used to. But in the, in the scripture, it talks particularly about the angels. And angels play a prominent part in, in Christmas. And the angels as, uh, are these beings, as you know, that uh, some people picture them as winged because they have uh, uh, that picture. Other people just, they look like a, a normal man. And all through scripture, the, the whole scripture from beginning all the way through was looking forward to Jesus, looking forward to Jesus as the Messiah that will come. And so uh, angels uh, oftentimes delivered messages to, for example, uh, uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and then to the, th then to the children of Israel. They, they delivered messages and they came and, and, and sometimes promised a, a baby would be coming, like, uh, like Samuel and like, and, and like Samson. Or uh, sometimes they, they would come and, and bring destruction. Sometimes they would be warriors, but they were always delivering messages. And so the children of Israel became used to that, that the way God spoke was through angels, and angels would, would show their connection with God. But frequently, over and over again, like us sometimes, uh, the children of the Israel, the Israelites, would decide they, didn't, they, they could just handle life without God. And so they would start doing things that that God told them not to do and, they, and God would bring punishment and they would have to sometimes be, uh, uh, suffer droughts and suffer famine and, and sometimes they would have to be cast out of their, their country and then brought back. And, but still, they, they, they said, God must still be connected with us because uh, he keeps sending angels to deliver. But then all of a sudden, seemingly without warning, the, the, the delivery stopped for 400 years there were no more deliveries and the children of Israel began to be concerned their their country had been taken over by Rome and so they still they still were the Israelites but they had been taken over by Rome they had, had a new temple built and so they were still worshiping but they didn't feel any connection to God anymore they were they were crying out God where is this deliverer where is this Messiah and so uh, day after day they would go to the temple and they would they would look for some kind of message something from God but the deliveries stopped it reminds me of when I used to used to deliver pizza I would be in the room waiting there and, and along with a bunch of other uh, delivery guys were making pizza boxes but no phones would ring and we'd wait for that time when that phone would start to ring well these people were waiting for for God to speak they were wondering have you have you left us have you forgotten us and that brings us to Luke chapter 1, verse 5. And here's what it says. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of God, uh, of the Lord blameless. So here were two people. Both of the, uh, one was a priest, and the other uh, was the, uh, the daughter of uh, the great uh, descendant uh, of Aaron, the high priest. And so these two people married each other, and they probably had great hopes for the future. What is, what's God, God going to do through our life? And one, one, one way that the Israelites were obedient to God was to have children. And they probably when they were in their, in their 20s, they were hoping for children. In their 30s, they were thinking, well, we haven't had children yet, but God will give us children. But then the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, and they had prayed for children. They had asked God for children, but he hadn't given them any. And so it says, and they both walked righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. They, they were saying, we, we just want God. We just want to be connected to God. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, 
and they were both well advanced in years and so they had watched their life go by and what they expected out of life didn't happen they still had they, they were still walking with God but they they, they weren't able to fulfill this need and, and in, indeed a commandment of God to be fruitful and multiply. And so it says in verse 8, So it was the while he was serving, that is, talking about Zacharias, while he was serving as a priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of, of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So here was... Here, here was Zacharias, he was serving God as a priest, but once in a lifetime, there was, there was a lottery, in it, and if you hadn't done it, your name could be in it. Once in a lifetime, a priest might have the opportunity to actually go into the Holy of Holies, go and offer incense, a and the people would all wait outside, as it says here. It says, and the whole multitude of people were praying outside at the hour of incense they were all saying God where are you we're under this bondage where are you and they would wait for the priest to go in and when they would when they would see the smoke going up to heaven when the priest had offered the incense it represented their prayers and they would say okay this maybe this time God is going to hear our prayers and so the whole multitude of people were praying outside and the hour of in, uh, hour of incense and you know since a since you only you didn't get a practice you only had one time to do it Zacharias probably was interviewing everybody the other priests and making sure that he he walked in the right place that he offered the right thing and he wanted to make sure he got everything right because it was his one chance and it says then, um, and the, then the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar and Zacharias saw him and he was troubled and fear fell upon him can you imagine this he's already practiced he knows what he's doing he goes in there he's working his way around in, in this inner sanctum and he's got the incense he's ready to offer the incense and all of a sudden there's somebody else that appears there and he, he he's shocked he's stunned he doesn't know how to act it's like it, it, it's like when you're in a room you think you're by yourself and then all of a sudden somebody else says boo you know and you're and you're scared and so he was he was scared to death he didn't know what to think but the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. The first thing he said is, Don't be afraid. You know, in the Old Testament, many times, you know what the Bible says? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear the Lord. And yet here this angel is trying to calm him down and says, You don't need to be afraid. Don't be afraid, Zacharias. But the angel said, don't be afraid, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. So he says, you, you're going to bear a son, his name is going to be John, he's going to be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him, go before him being Jesus, being the Savior, being the Messiah. He will go before him in spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He got he quite a denouncement here in, in, in his later years of life. He says, God is going to do something and, and, and he's going to give your barren wife a son. And if I was, if I was Zachariah, right, Zacharias right there, I would, that's the last thing I would have heard, right? Because the rest of it would just be a blur. When he's telling me that here I am well on in age, and uh, my wife is, and we're going to have a son. And, and that was what was on Zacharias' mind. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I'm an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. I'm an old man. Notice he doesn't say his wife is an old woman, right? He uses a well advanced, because that's good to be advanced in something. I'm old, and my wife is well advanced. How are we going to have kids? And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And, I, and if I'm imagining Gabriel saying this, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, that kind of voice. And Gabriel, we learn, was the main character. He was the main angel for this whole Christmas season. He was the one that was getting the most deliveries. He was the best deliverer. And so he said, 
You're questioning me. I stand in the presence of God. You've been waiting for an angel to come down. I am the angel, and I'm standing. I'm the one that stands in the presence of God. I give you direct, a direct message. And he said, and he, and he was sent to speak to you and to bring these glad tidings. But behold, you will, uh, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you do not believe my words which were fulfilled in their own time. And so all this time people have been waiting to hear from God. An angel shows up and the first one to hear it doesn't believe the words. After all of the unbelievable things that God has done, he doesn't believe the words. And so he said, you want a sign? I'll give you a sign. And he gave him the sign that he couldn't speak. A lot of times we say, God, give me a sign, right? God, I, I'm not sure if I should do this. Give me a sign. But he doesn't always give us the sign that we want. And I'm sure if he had a choice, not being able to speak would probably not be the choice of what he, what he had. But that's what, that's what uh, he was given. And behold, you will not be able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. I wonder what he was doing in the temple. You know what I would be thinking? How am I going to go out there? Everybody's waiting for me and not have anything to say. And I, he'd probably just be, oh man, what am I going to do? But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he'd seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned them and remained silent. So he tried to indicate what had happened in the temple. He, he couldn't speak, so he was trying to and picture this, hundreds maybe of people, maybe thousands of people, and he's, he's trying to show them, uh, and he can't speak. So probably it was something like this. You tell me, you tell me what I'm saying right now. What am I saying? Oh, that's this part. Okay. Okay, so the angel, and then, then, then he goes, and, and then the angel goes. <laughs> what was that? Your wife is going to have a baby. Okay. So he probably signaled. Somehow they figured out what he was, was saying. I don't know if they believed it or not. I'm feeling like the angel right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the people waited. He was speechless. He indicated what had happened. So it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed and he went to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And so this was a privilege that a, a, a few men have. Somehow or another, he was able to communicate to his wife you are going to have a baby. Most of us don't get to, get to describe that, but for some reason, he, he is able to communicate that to his wife, and then she sees that it's true. So now those days, uh, now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself for five months. Hid herself for five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my, my reproach among people. So, it doesn't say why she's hit herself for five months, but it was probably because all her life people had looked down on her because they had a belief back then. If you don't have a child, you're not blessed by God. God doesn't, you're doing something wrong. And so all her life, it wasn't true, was it? God, all her life she had been faithful to God. But now, when no one would believe it, no one expected, she's pregnant. So she waits till she's five months. When she comes out, could you tell that someone's pregnant after five months? Oh, yeah. She said, yeah, that's right. It's me. God did something, right? And everybody said, whoa, it's true. God did something for her. And so before we go on, I just, I just want, to take, want you to notice one thing here. And uh, that is that this message of Christmas, it had been going on since the beginning. Christmas is coming. They did not fully understand it, but Christmas was coming. Then Christmas was all it was there it was on the verge. John the Baptist was going to be was going to be paving the way for Jesus. Christmas was about to occur. occur. And it, guess what? That message of Christmas continues to ripple on today. The difference that life it, it makes in life that Jesus came for us goes on today. But here's what I want you to know. Some of you this may be true of you may feel like 
you know, I'm not in my middle age anymore. I'm past my middle age. As a matter of fact, maybe I'm getting even, uh, maybe I'm well ahead, well advanced in years. But here's the thing with God. It's not too late to be part of God's plan. It doesn't matter your age. It didn't matter their age. It didn't matter that it was unpredictable, that you wouldn't expect it. God likes to surprise us. And God, as long as we realize that the, the message of Christmas, the message of Christ, is still rippling on today through us. God chose to, chose to use us. And it's not too late. He can choose you. It doesn't, he's not confined by, by the fact that you're older. As a matter of fact, he can do something that you would never expect. So let's, let's continue on because the angel had, a, he, he disappeared and he had a second delivery he had to make. And here's what it says in verse 26. And the sixth month the angel of Gabriel was sent from, sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. So you know what it means to be espoused, don't you? There, in our day, you, you, you maybe meet someone and you're, uh, you date the person, then you get engaged, and then you get married. But back in the day, there it was a more that it was more of a, uh, matchmakers, or sometimes parents would would see a young uh, a young man and a woman growing up, and they would say, you know, they they seem like they might be a good match for each other, and maybe the maybe the uh, the uh, um, the son's parents would go to the parents of the daughter and they say, hey, we think that your daughter ought to marry our son. And so sometimes uh, they would come to an agreement and they would exchange some money, a dowry. And that would mean that you were a spouse. It's kind of like being engaged, only more so. Because you can't just back out of it. You can't just take the, the diamond ring back. You, you have to get, actually get a divorce. Even though you're not married, you have to wait for nine months to a year before you're actually actually married but you're a spouse to someone and so people uh historians guess at that time that mary was probably 14 to 16 years old and she was espoused to joseph and joseph was probably 17 18 19 years old and so these were young people and it tells us there that uh she was so she was engaged to be she was probably looking forward to my my life the life i have ahead of me i'm there uh we're, we're gonna maybe we'll move out of nazareth we'll go to a better town maybe we'll go to capernaum we're gonna have a life i'm marrying a carpenter he's got a trade right and and so she was looking forward to all, uh, all of that and then here comes this a uh, this angel gabriel again and shows up and said, came, and came into her house and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this would be. And so here's Mary. She's in her house. She's maybe probably alone there. This angel shows up. He goes in and he says, Hey, you're honored among, among women. And she, and she is freaking out. She said, What's, what's going on here? Who are you? Why are you in my house? And what are you talking about here? And the angel said to her, what did he say? Fear not. Again, fear not. And so he, she said, fear not, uh, uh, fear not to Zacharias, the angel. And now he says, fear not to her again. God was, through the angel, was giving her comfort. Wait a minute, this is good news. This is me taking a step toward you. This is make me taking a step toward mankind. Don't be afraid. This is good news. And the angel said, Fear not, for thou hast been found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And then she, she, this might have been a blur to her too. She apparently remembers it later, but you're going to call his name Jesus. And behold, he, sh he shall be great and should be called the Son of the Most High. Your Son is also going to be the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Your Son is going to be the King. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Your Son is going to not only be the Son of the Most High, he's not only going to be the King, he's going to reign forever. And there shall be no end. That's quite a, quite a bit to take in if you're 14 year old, isn't it? Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall these things be seen? I know not a man. And so even back then, apparently, there still had to be a man involved if there was a pregnancy involved. And they had probably told her this. And so she was saying, Wait a minute, th this is not what my parents said, the way it works, right? There has to be a man there. How can you be telling me that I'm pregnant 
when there's no man there? And the, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy, Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Not just the son of Mary, but the son of God. And behold, thy cousin, cousin Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her age, in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. That was quite a bit to take in. She also found out her, her, her cousin Elizabeth, the lady well advanced in years, was also pregnant, right? Had been pregnant for six months. And so God was doing something with her. And the, the, the thing I, I want you to note from this is the message of Christmas continues to ripple on till now and is never too early. Remember, it's never too late, even when you're well advanced in years, but it's also never too early. For God to use you to carry out his plan. The Christmas plan is still unfolding now, right? And it doesn't matter your age. It's ne never too late. God can still handle it. It's never too early. God can use you to carry out his Christmas plan. So I wanted to look at one more passage. And that's found in the book of Matthew. Uh, verse eight, uh, chapter 1, verse 18. And here's what it says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, behold, they came together, before they came together, excuse me, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now we're looking at Joseph's side, right? We're looking at what, what Joseph experienced. And what Joseph found out was that his fiance, that his one he was espoused to, the one that he had, was not yet married to, was pregnant. And no matter what she said, if you're a 17 year old, 18 year old boy, young man, and your fiance is pregnant, it doesn't matter what story they, they come up with. It's not going to be quite good enough, right? Because that doesn't happen. It's not the, it, it, that, that just, that's never been found to happen. And so, and so then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make a, her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Joseph had all kinds of plans for his life. He, was, he, he knew he was going to marry. His parents had already made an agreement. He was trained as a carpenter. He, he had learned that probably from his dad. And he was just, he, he was just saying to him, he, he was just thinking of Mary, and he said, if I were a carpenter and you were a lady, would you marry me? That's what he was thinking probably as he was pounding those nails. Until he finds out that she's pregnant. Then, it's like, what happened here? Um, God, what, why, why is this happening? We had everything planned out. We, we knew what was happening in our life from now to the next thing to the next thing. And then this happens? But while he, th while he thought about these things, behold, here comes Gabriel again. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared. Probably Gabriel, doesn't name him this time. To him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife. So how, how, did, it, how did the angel appear to him this time? In a dream. Is that crazy or what? He didn't even have to come from heaven apparently. He just could get, be, enter into his dream. Would that be crazy? If, if someone could just enter another person's dream? So apparently they have this conversation in Joseph's dream. Dreams can be crazy things, right? Does God ever use dreams? Yeah, oh, he still can. God has used dreams. The most sure word is his word. Though. It's always got to be compared with his word. I remember one time I was, I, I was uh, trying to think of this kid's name in a youth group I used to be a youth pastor at. I could not think of his last name. His first name was Mike. And what was his last name? I went to sleep that night. And in my sleep, I was dreaming that I was back at that place again. And I was teaching Sunday school. And there was 15 kids there. And one of them was this kid. And I said, I know your first name's Mike, but I can't think of your last name. And Mike, in my dream, says, well, I'll give you a hint. Is that crazy? Yourself giving you a hint about your, he says, it's like thug. And I said, like thug? It's Mike, Mike Hood. He said, yeah, that's right. I woke up, I knew that, I, weird things happen in dreams, but I've never had an angel actually appear to me in a dream. This angel appeared and they had a conversation in the dream. 
and here's, here's what the angel says. Uh, but while, while he thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, as your wife. For what is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Wow, another, uh, another big thing to lay on a, a, a 17, 18 year old young man. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. This whole thing happened so that God could come to us. We couldn't come to him. We were separated from him. So God said, I'm going to have to come to you. Don't be afraid. For the, for the third time, he says, do not be afraid. This is good news. You're going to... You're gonna, your, your wife, your wife-to-be is going to have a child and he's going to be the savior of the world. He's going to save people from their sins. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, so now he wakes up after having this conversation with, with Gabriel, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him, his wife, and did not know her till the, until she had brought forth her firstborn son and they did what they were told, and they called him Jesus. Here's the third thing I want you to know from this pas passage. And that is, you know what? In life, a lot of times, things don't go our way. A lot of times, things go crazy. A lot of times, we feel like life is, is just a, a big mess. And we have all kinds of, we had all kinds of plans of how it was going to go. Uh, but then it didn't go that way. Let me ask you, has anybody here had plans of how things are going to go and they didn't go that way? How about in the last month? Yeah, it keeps happening, right? We have plans. We make our plans, it tells us in Proverbs, but the final outcome is in God's hands. So this was a mess. Wasn't this a mess for Joseph? He finds his, 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 his fiance pregnant. It's throwing everything crazy for him, right? And, and, and then he gets this news, and somehow, somehow, the message of Christmas continues to ripple on today, and God can take our mess and use it put everything in place sometimes we messed up so much we wonder if it can be put back together but God can take our mess and he can use it to put everything in place in ways that we can't imagine you know why because all things work together for good to those that love God when you're up and say God here's my mess I don't know what I can do about it that's why God has you right where he wants you because he wants to take your mess and he wants to forward the Christmas story through it and so so many amazing things happen in this story but particularly, God worked out all the circumstances. An old couple that, that, that happened to both be descendants, uh, a, a part of the priesthood. He put them together to bring John the Baptist. A young couple that was engaged, but she was pregnant before they were married. Somehow God put it together to bring Jesus into the world. Whatever is taking place in your life, God is still Rip, the ripples of Christmas are still continuing and God can use you wherever you're at if you're in a mess God can use you if you're young God can use you if you're old God can use you God can use any of us he says all you have to do is don't be afraid put your trust in me because Christmas is on the way let's stand for a closing song let me let me pray for you and we'll stand for a closing song dear God we thank you for uh, your word. Thank you that it even speaks to us today. And we thank you that you, in, you, uh, you interacted with us. As a matter of fact, you went all the way from heaven to come to earth uh, just to become one of us and yet at the same time be fully God and to save us from what we could, could ne never do ourselves. And we pray that we would take that message with us and wherever we're at in life, no matter what situation, help us just to trust you that you're working out your plan. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.